F82 for three years now. We're gonna talk about some of the best things and the worst things about this car during that span. So first things first, this car just hit 75,000 miles. It is looking incredible out here in the clouds up in the mountain. But that brings me to my first point is just how this car looks. Exterior design language, especially with the modifications. This car seems to not have one bad angle. Many people say this generation of M3 and M4, the F8X generation, is the best looking modern BMW ever made. And really looking at this thing parked up here right now, we can really see why that is. The front end is super aggressive, nice sharp, but also sculpted front bumper. And not to mention when you add the carbon fiber pieces, like the front M4 CS spoiler. This thing just looks aggressive, super mean, super low to the ground as well. This is factory suspension, factory ride height. Just looks menacing to be fair. You see this in your rear view mirror or passing by you, your head instantly turns and it just looks different than a regular four series right off the bat. But my favorite has to be the side profile. You really get to see how aggressive this thing looks with the right modifications, the splitter, the spoiler diffuser, the wheels. This thing looks like a little pocket rocket race ship is you have the swooping line like most of the M cars you see them iconic ones and it swoops into the side badge which is actually functional it brings air from the wheel well brings it down the side of the car for better aerodynamics the regular force here doesn't have this but it's interesting because the G8X generation discontinued this function on the car so really they just have a fake they have a fake version of this on the new M3 and M4 which I really don't like it's kind of just like a side badge I don't know how to feel about it. The M2 doesn't even have that at all. So it's just kind of sad to see it gone. And then we walk around to the rear of the car and it looks absolutely insane. I mean, super aggressive, especially with these 20 inch black diamond wheels, AWE track exhaust with the chrome and carbon fiber tips. You know, the profile view is really nice, but I don't know, maybe the back end is my favorite. I mean, just a lot of girth, a lot of aggressiveness. Just looks super good. One of the best things about this generation is the power plant. So we have a three liter, inline six twin turbocharged engine stock is around 530 horsepower with the stage two tune from alpine motorsport we're looking at 530 horsepower paired with the exhaust from awe tuning so engine bay looks looks nice and really put together we have this really big carbon strut brace but now it's time to hop inside the m4 and show you guys what this thing is capable of on the road One of my favorite parts about this interior are the seats themselves. Really cool design, one piece, you know, the headrest is attached to the rest of the seat, just a one piece seat. It's just nice and snug when you're taking the tight turns. And we also have cool materials as well. So we have carbon fiber, we have black chrome down here as well. We have full merino extended leather on this specific M4. So we also have white stitching as well. And we have black stitching on the extended leather on the dash. And then you got nice materials on the door handle as well. Pretty much everything you would expect to see from an M3 and M4. And not to mention the Harman Kardon sound system. It's just a really great place to enjoy your music. This car is an awesome road trip car. So if you guys are looking for a car that has a lot of performance, can really beat most cars on the road with simple tunes and exhaust. As a daily, this car is incredible. I've been dailying this car ever since I've owned it, you know, three years ago. And I gotta say, this car does it all. Sure, it's a little impractical here and there given the front end clearance, it's a little low. You scrape with the front splitter pretty often, even on stock suspension. But we do everything from grocery runs, canyon runs, road trips. We bought this car from Florida, drove it up to Michigan, no problem. We also drove it from Michigan out here to California. We had the car full of stuff in the back. The trunk was full. We pretty much moved our whole stuff out here at once in this car so not only was it a super fun road trip but it just goes to show what you're getting with the bmw m4 you're getting all the modern tech modern performance and also modern practicality it's insane this car is super wide so you got a lot of space in the interior it's wider than the regular four series 
So it's really spacious in here as well. It's just a really nice place to be. Right here is this generation of iDrive, so you can get Apple CarPlay on this. You can also time your lap times on the track, but even if you're on the street, you have little cool settings like this, like little boost gauges, which is really nice. So you can see how much power you're putting down, how much torque you're putting down. You can check all your maintenance, your vehicle status. Everything else is pretty point, you know, simple. You have also standard BMW navigation as well. You see we're out here in the canyons. It's probably the biggest selling point of this car is the daily drivability given when this car came out. These cars are made 2015 to 2020, so you're getting all the bells and whistles of pretty much a new car uh, for a really good price rate. <laughs>
now that we have the m4 parked up i can walk around and show you guys every single modification that we've done to this car to make it how it is so on the front end of the car we have black kidney grills up front we have a carbon fiber m4 cs splitter and then we also changed the reflectors from orange to a clear look and then coming around the side we also did the gloss black side fin side grill right here we did carbon fiber mirror caps and we did 20 percent window tint with our window stickers on here as well and then coming down low we also have carbon fiber side skirts and then in the back you can see these really wide really meaty 20 inch black diamond bd f12 wheels which really i think change the game for this car and then as we come around back we have a nice carbon fiber cs style spoiler from rw carbon we even added the black m4 badge as well and then we have the m4 gts style tail lights from west coast euros and then down low we have a nice carbon fiber led diffuser with a brake light right in the middle and this diffuser is from aa concepts co and then we have the full non-resonated awe track exhaust which is a cat back straight piped exhaust system and we went ahead and went for the carbon fiber and chrome tips which i think looks insane especially when you step back and then from here we can check out the interior of the car pretty much stock aside from the carbon tastic carbon fiber and alcantara flat bottom and performance steering wheel which looks really good they also came with extended carbon fiber paddle shifters and then down here we have the carbon fiber shift knob and shifts around and performance and then under the hood of this bad boy we have that inline six but we have the stage two tune from alpine motorsport and i gotta say this car stock really wasn't doing it for me something definitely to keep in mind when you're purchasing one of these cars is you're gonna have to modify it to get it exactly how you want it now i have met a few people who really do enjoy the car as a stock car these cars are capable of much more than what you get from the factory and things like the steering wheel right here really enhance the interior and, and make it feel even newer than what it already is even though the interior is already very modern but I will say the biggest modification that helped the driving aspect of this car are the 20 inch wheels getting the wider 20 by 10 and 20 by 11 in the rear from Black Diamond really has changed how this car puts the traction down and makes it feel much more safe uh, from the factory with the 19 inch wheels these cars are known for struggling to get grip in any kind of conditions even broad daylight when the sun is out and the roads are warm you really have to warm up the tires but i think this is the best part because there are so many aftermarket options for this platform if you think about its competitors like the audi uh, rs5 and the c63s amg they don't have nearly as many aftermarket options as the bmw m cars do so I think that's just awesome. BMW M offers a lot of factory carbon fiber parts and aero parts from M Performance that you can add on this car if you don't want to go the aftermarket route. You can get everything from carbon fiber mirrors, front splitter, rear diffusers, even side skirts, uh, and different types of uh, M Performance steering wheels and even carbon trims, all from the factory. So I think that's good if, if you're somebody who really want, wants to stay OEM, you have that option as well. But if you want to save a lot of money, you can really go the aftermarket route. You pretty much pay half off if not north of half off of um, OEM parts cost. So and last but not least is the cost of ownership. So we've done a few updates on this and the prices seem to stay roughly around the same. As far as MPGs, this car gets around 17 to 25 miles per gallon on sticker. But in reality, you can get up to like 20 to 30, maybe 32 on the highway if you're really driving the car super tame, full efficient, everything like that. So you can actually get better fuel economy than what you're seeing on the sticker. That being said, nowadays fuel prices, you can expect to spend anywhere from like $150 to $200 a month on gas if you're pretty much daily driving it. It's really good for a car that has this kind of performance. But speaking of aftermarket modifications, the cost is where it gets kind of, eh, gets kind of iffy. It's all relative, I guess, but cost per modification can get pretty, pretty expensive relative to other cars in this price range. So you can expect to pay minimum like three, $400 for a carbon piece. And that's like aftermarket, maybe Chinese parts ebay parts and stuff like that even like carbon mirrors tend to be around four hundred dollars carbon spoiler around 500 diffuser even if it's the non-led minimum you're looking to spend around maybe 400 front splitter you can expect to pay minimum 500 dollars for a carbon fiber one so and also maintenance of on this car for three years and all we've done is is uh oil changes we've done spark plugs as preventative um that's pretty much it i mean there really is <laughs> no maintenance with this car you really just have to fill it up with fuel make sure you're on top of the oil changes but i would definitely keep in mind the more you tune these cars the more issues or the more parts you're going to have to keep replacing more often so this car isn't crazy tuned it's just got the simple exhaust and the tune but you know once you start going like north of 550 600 horsepower you know you're gonna have to get the internals done like the crank hub 
um, and that's a pretty common problem on these cars. And you're gonna have to start um, servicing the uh, turbo lines as well. Just a lot of hoses and stuff uh, involved with the tw twin turbo setup on this car. You're gonna have to start servicing much more frequently. Also, you need to start doing your spark plugs more frequently as well. So if you're looking to get a car that's super tunable, you know, you're gonna lose some of that daily drivable aspect from it. As where if you just do simple bolt-on mods like how I did, you can really maintain that uh, daily drivability. So the crank hub is definitely the most common thing people do when they start going high horsepower on these cars. Also upgrading the clutches, not only on the manual, but on the DCT as well, can get pretty expensive when you're looking to add a lot of power. So as a stock car, the DCT tends to handle up to around 200,000 miles of wear before you have to replace the clutch pack. Um, but that's on stock power. So just keep that in mind when you're tuning your cars, you're probably gonna have to start upgrading some parts here and there. It's not at the end of the world, you're just gonna have to put a little bit more money into it. There's definitely something to keep in mind. The exhaust is really hard to get like a really clean, good sound out of it. I know my car right now with the AWE track exhaust, non-resonated full cat back, it sounds super raw. I wouldn't say it sounds like the cleanest sounding exhaust note, but it sounds super raw and it does sound good, especially in person, if you guys have heard this car, it sounds pretty insane. But please guys, do not just do a simple muffler delete on these cars, it will actually make the car sound worse than stock so and that's where the price gets tricky with going with like the cost of ownership if you're going to start modifying the car you really have to spend proper money on proper parts on this car you, you don't really want to cheap out um because you kind of get what you pay for with this you would expect like oh e46 m3 may, maybe you can get an exhaust from aftermarket company for around 500 dollars. with this car you can expect minimum to pay around two thousand to twenty five hundred dollars for an exhaust system there's a lot more engineering that goes in with these cars and it's definitely going to reflect on the price that you're paying for aftermarket parts so if you guys enjoyed today's video if you did make sure you hit that like button hit that subscribe button check us out on instagram at beamer fam and i'll see you guys in the next video thanks for watching